For those of you who might be wondering, what is the big deal about formative assessments and why should we even be using them? Well, without the use of formative assessment or checks for understanding, how are we to know what our individual students need to be successful in our classrooms? One of the pioneers of instruction, Carol Ann Tomlinson stated, informative assessment isn't an end in itself, but the beginning to better instruction. Today's FA is brought to you by the letter F, Flipgrid. Hi, Skillful Teachers, and welcome to Skillful Teaching with Dr. Angela. I'm Angela McCord, skillful teacher and education consultant. My goal is to motivate, inspire, and uplift teachers everywhere including adding you to my professional learning network. If you haven't already done so, now is a great time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and indeed share. Be added to the drawing for a free audible book. When I am at 300 subscribers, I will be doing a drawing and you could be the lucky winner. Flipgrid has always been one of my favorite apps. So it came to my mind quickly when I was thinking about what form of assessment could we use that starts with the letter F. Students love Flipgrid because they feel like they're shooting a video or something, right? Okay, but it can also be used on a laptop as well. So why is Flipgrid a great way to assess students? Well, it allows students to share their ideas and their thoughts with creativity, while at the same time getting fun feedback from their peers and teachers. And you can do just about anything on Flipgrid. Icebreakers, weekly reflections, book talks, mini presentations, and the list goes on and on. Let's go into the lab and look at an example. Okay, I am in my Flipgrid account and I am just going to go to this one grid that I have created here and I have a few videos on here. What's neat about this, um, I'm not going to go into depth, but you can um, hide flip grids if you're not wanting to expose those again or if you're done with them you can, and they can be active or inactive. So I'm just going to go into this one just to show a quick example of one that I created um, with some math teachers to kind of share how we could uh, do this with students. So once you click on that, so this particular one is called find the mistake. So here you see that I have written out the directions for the students. So when they log in and this is shared with them, they will see the directions, find the mistake. What's also great about this is that they have an immersive reader embedded right in the program, which is so great because students who don't read as well or may need this as an accommodation, you can click here and it's going to literally read all of the instructions that you have. So I'll play Check a little out bit. Check the attached file order of ops. In the picture, one of the expressions is solved correctly. The other is incorrect. So I won't play all of that, but that is so neat, right? And then um, it highlights it as well. So that's cool. So then once the students read the instructions, then they go in and answer in video with their Flipgrid and then other students can respond on them as well. So what I have here is um, just a pretend kind of student here. Jason is looking at one of the expressions and commenting on it. So let's listen in a little bit. This problem appears to be correct because three times two is six and then they did inside the parentheses and then they added from left to right six and four and then divided 10 divided by four. Okay, so you see a lot of mistakes were made there, right? As in the instructions, it said that there were a lot of mistakes. So the student's job is to look at this flip grid and then give a flip grid and tell what the mistakes are. Then other students can comment and tell students how they explain, how well they explain their answers. So that's really neat. And then, oh, they can get very creative. They have all types of little emojis that they can put on the videos and students really get engaged. Now, the best part I like about this is that as the teacher, you are looking at 
the feedback that you can give as the teacher. So you can create a rubric and it doesn't have to be an exhaustive or an extensive rubric. It can be something really quick, like a three, two, one, you know, because this is formative, right? You want to listen and you're checking for understanding. So it's not a final grade, but it's something you're going to give feedback to. You can click on that and you can give points for ideas and you can also give points for performance. And then the best part, you can leave a detailed comment for the student as well. And then once you give them that feedback, you can email it to them. You can copy it and um, share it with them. And so they can come in and look at the feedback on their videos. Also, Flipgrid is great because it has an integration with a lot of your platforms. So if you're using Microsoft Teams, it can go right into um, your class. And then, of course, Google Classroom and even share a Flipgrid on Remind. So that is a OK. This is really a fun way to gain some insight on students and not just for math. There are Flipgrids about just about everything. Do give it a try. If you've used Flipgrid, leave me a comment and let me know about your experience. If you like this video and you plan to use Flipgrid in the future, give it a thumbs up. Share this video with another skillful teacher. And don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Today's FA was brought to you by the letter F for Flipgrid. Thank you for watching, learning, and sharing because we know Quality teaching is quality education.